This video is brought to you by Triple Sleeve TCG. Check out their website at triplesleevetcg.com. Hi, welcome back to yet again another Gold Paladin deck profile because I can't do enough of these and I will do as many as I want to. So, today we got another Gurgit deck, but this time we are not focusing too much around Raven Hair Dazzle. We're focusing more on multi attacking and bringing back Mox Slash Dragon as like the main force of punishing and finishing off your opponent so been looking at a few lists online and this is the list that i really liked and i tested it out and i like it a lot tweaked some things didn't really like what i tweaked went right back to how it was before and i kind of settled on this so i'm just going to show you guys what i've been playing with if you want to try a gurgit deck now that we're basically done with standard so this will probably be around the last time i do a standard gold paladin deck so this is it this is most likely gonna be the last one and then watch i'll make another one so <laughs> let's just go right into it our starter is knight of early dawn coel so yay sp starter woo coel all right moving on to grade threes starting off with the key focus card of the deck which is sunrise rain Knight Gurgit. so Gurgit's skill is uh, continuous, you know, uh, if your opponent's at grade 3, uh, when you call a card by a card ability, this this unit and the unit called, or, yeah, or this unit gains 5k for each Excel marker you have, and then every unit called by a card ability gains 5k for each marker as well. So passively, this gets power, which is really, really cool, and then anything called by a card ability uh, gets that buff as well. So that's the focus of the deck. Other skill is during your turn or during your opponent during your or your opponent's battle phase, um, when this unit uh, is attacks, is attacked or attacks. I'm already confusing people. When this unit attacks or is attacked, you counter blast one. Look at five cards from the top of your deck. Call two from among them to your rear guard circles and shuffle the rest back into your deck. If it's your opponent's turn, you call them to the guardian circle instead of rear guard circles. So defensive skill really nice. Um, calls two things during the battle phase, which is just a really cool ability for a gold pound and card. Makes sense that it would just kind of be like the last huzzah towards the end. And yeah, just multi-attacking. It's an Excel deck. It's pretty good. Getting that power for those calls too is nice. But also like if you're missing a key multi-attack target like Mox Slash, you just call it during the battle phase and boom, you extend your attacks. All right, we're still trying to get Excel markers as fast as possible. So we're running the one copy of Incandescent Lion Blonde Ezel for the Superior Ride. Blonde Ezel skill, uh, we're not gonna use the first one because we're not running Kirif as a starter, but it's, if you have Bowman and, and Gareth on your board, Soul Blast Kirif, ride it from your hand. Can't do it. Other skill is when it attacks, when it's on the Vanguard Circle, you call a card from your hand to the rear card circle. So that's helpful if it's the turn you go into the Superior Ride. You swing, you want to do an extra attack, you might call Aglaveil out um, just for a big hitter. So extended attacks are nice, but it's mostly there to get out the Excel markers faster during your opponent's grade 1 or grade 2 turn. So just one of those, though, just because, you know, don't really need more. And Ezel doesn't really do much else, so once you're on grade 3 Gurgit, like, you don't really want to deal with Ezel for the rest of the game. And we want space for the grade 3s, such as... Three copies of Battlefield Storm Sagamore. So Sagamore's skill is when it's placed on Banner Rear. So last one, draw a card, um, call a card from your hand. Uh, this only works when it's placed from hand, so you can't do it into your battle phase for Gurgit. That'd be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, really, really good card for setting up your main phase, giving things power. Uh, you can call it with Mox Slash for extended attacks during the battle phase, so... Loving, loving me, Massagramore. It's a great card. Um, next, three copies of Mox Slash Dragon. Card's great. MVP of the deck so far. Uh, Vanner Rear, when it attacks, Count Blast 1. You call a card from your hand to Regard Circle, and then this gets 5k. So if you call it through Sagamore or, um, what's the other one? Wonder as old during the main phase. Powered up with Gurgit's skill, so now you have a really big hitter for the late game. Anything you call with Mox Slash is going to get that Gurgit power up as well. 
So, and the more and more you keep riding Gurgits on top of Gurgits, the more powerful this card gets as well. So this card is just really great card. Um, you can chain this off into multiple Sagamores and multiple Wonderezels. You can even chain this off into another Mock Slash. It's great. So, Mock Slash is still overall the MVP of the deck, even after losing Percival, so that's good to know. Last but not least, uh, the list that I was looking at had text one copy of Edmund, which is basically an Aglovale clone, but it gives you shield. I was kind of like, whatever about this, but I really do like the fact that you can continuously bounce it and can swing with it repetitively, um, which I've been finding myself doing in playtesting online. So I really like the card as a one of, because even though I only run one of it, I feel like I consistently see it during my turns because I keep bouncing it back to my hand and calling it. So what it does is guard circle when it's placed, if your vanguard is grade three or greater, it gets 10k shield. So it's a grade three with 10k shield, essentially. So you can call it for Gurgurt's defensive skill from deck two and it helps in that way. Other skill is when it attacks, you choose one of your rear guards, move it into your soul, and it gets 10k. And at the end of the battle, you bounce it. So it's Aglovale, but that extra 3k can help if your opponent's at a, if your opponent's a protector and excel grade three. So you can match their number with 22 to their 12. Power up, you call it during battle phase, now it's 32. So it can make a difference. So one copy admin, I think, does help the deck with that increase in power. So I was it for grade threes. Going off into grade twos, uh, four copies of Oath, Liberator, Aglovale. Uh, skill is Vanguard Circle when ridden, count boss one, look at the top three cards of your deck, call one, the rest gets put to the bottom of your deck. The other skill is Rearguard Circle when it attacks, choose one of your rear guards, shove it to soul, it gets 10k, so like admin skill. So, want to run four, just because it's a really good ride target if I don't ride in the Wonder Rezzle, um, and it's other skill just to be a big beater and um, suck up units for that extra power is really, really good as well. So you want to consistently, consistently see multiple copies of this um, just because filling your hand back up and bouncing stuff is still good. Control decks exist, like Chaos Breaker, Narukami, stuff like that that's going to get rid of your front row. So being able to put those units back into your hand is really helpful. So Aglovale, definitely a 4 of for this deck. Next up, since we are doing the ride chain, four copies of Flame Wind Lion Wonder Ezel. So the first skill is Act, Soul Blast 1, Retire, Crimson Lion Beast Howl from your rear. Search your deck for Incandescent Lion Blonde Ezel, ride it, and Blonde Ezel gets drive minus one. So the ideal ride is to ride into this, have Howl on hand, superior ride into Blonde Ezel, and just go from there. You know, like just the one trick pony goes off. Uh, the other skill, which is actually more important, is when it's placed, you call a card from your hand to regard circle. So this counts when it's being called from the deck by Gurgit skill or Sagamore or Mock Slash. Just anytime it's placed under rear, you can call another card from your hand to rear, which then triggers Gurgit's skill. So this is a better proc or a better like activator than Sagamore, and not not as good as Mock Slash because Mock Slash does it during when it attacks so but really really solid card and it's for free there's no cost you just throw it down you call a card so you gotta run four wonder hezel in the gurgit deck and last but not least for our last tech one copy of berengaria so berengaria is when it's placed by card ability you can either counter blast to soul charge or soul blast to counter charge basically always going to use it 10 out of 10 times for the soul blast to counter charge so this deck counter blasts a lot, so being able to counter charge just an extra card to help you get resources back is nice. So one copy is fine, just because you don't want to clog up the deck too much with grade twos. And, you know, if you just need to throw down cards just to have a board, you don't have to worry about just throwing this down to be vanilla. So the one copy works out just fine. Plus there's plenty of din drains to work with for counter charging. So on to grade ones. Four copies of Donnie Knight Gorbaduck. So it's our grade three searcher. Uh, if you call two things during the turn, it gets 5k. And then when it's placed from hand, uh, look at top five, look for grade three, add it. If you added a grade three, discard a card. So that's nice. I Almost every deck is 
probably going to be running play sets of these, so these are a given. Um, next up for grade ones, we're running four copies of Dindrain for counter charging. So Dindrain's skill is when it's placed by a card ability, you can Soul Blast one, and then you pick one of the following, which is either draw a card or you can counter charge. And if you counter charge, you get three K. So mostly, most of the time, I find myself doing the counter charge, but if I have all face-up damage and I just call Dindrain, you know, a draw doesn't hurt. So, Dindrain, great card, run four of it. It's great. Love, love Dindrain. All right, last but not least, the probably one of the most useless cards in this deck after grade three turn, uh, Howl. So Crimson Line Beast Howl skill is at the end of the battle that it boosts. If you have a Vanguard with Ezel in its name, Count Boss one, move to soul, call a card from your hand. So... The fact that it's Elzor Restrictive makes it kind of a dead card the rest of the game, but on, those turn, on the turn, if you do, when you ride into Ezel, you have the, another one of these on the board. You can still use it to extend attacks, which is nice, but it's mostly a ride target. You just ride it. It's fodder for shield, and it's just the Wonder Ezel Superior ride thing. So not really needed as much during the turn or during your games, other than just like a discard or in a resource target but you know it's there you want to run four of it because you want to see it for this peer ride and it helps for right consistency so it's not too bad so triggers really really simple lineup we're sticking back to the traditional a crit four draw four halo shield marks because you know draw pgs are the go-to for you know the sentinels right now it's a draw trigger, it's a BG, it's, it's just great. Um, eight crit, simple as that. Got your Flame of Victories, your Shinax, you know, uh, self-explanatory crits win games. And lastly, he'll save you from games when you're not good enough to survive turns. So that's basically it. Simple lineup as always. Um, that's pretty much it for the deck. I would say for the most part, it's very self-explanatory. The whole goal of the deck is to just superior ride into the Blonde as old, get your gift. The following turn, ride your Gurgit, get two markers, so now everything you call gets 10k by card ability, and just kind of just poke your opponent to death from there. Um, if you can, and you start another turn, ride that third Gurgit, and then basically try and win that turn. Um, the deck is slowed down a lot, so you're going to have to make up for that with um, being really aggressive, which is why I think the crits are definitely more important. So that's all I can really say. And also the other thing I want to say is when it comes to as far as com competitiveness, God, I can't speak today. Um, I would say this deck is probably on par with the Spectra Duke deck just because Spectra Duke I do feel like is a very autopilot. And I feel like the deck kind of just focuses on being very linear and very dependent on the fact that you're just hoping you get triggers. You hope that you get Howl and Kaiden right off the back. Um, so, you know, and you also have to hope that you get off the right chain to like fill your board faster and be as aggressive. So I do think Spectral Duke has more consistency in that the right chain's a lot easier to search off and find. Spectre Duke is a restanding Vanguard that gains a crit and has an extra K for defensiveness, so it's like a force deck. So it has a lot of competitive aspects to it, but I also feel like it has a downfall where um, it can just be really linear, and then your opponent can play around it a lot. You know, Whereas the Gurid deck, what I like about it is the fact that since Mox Slash Dragon um, is a key factor in the deck. You can kind of time how you do your attacks based on your opponent's damage triggers. So example would be, let me just move Gurgit out of the way. Uh, when you swing with Mox Slash and you call something, let's say you call a, an Edmund, and you can decide if whether or not your opponent got a trigger or not, if you're gonna use another Mox Slash, if you have it on the board to you know, continue the skill. If your opponent gets a damage trigger and you're like, well, it won't be, I can't really push anymore, or take advantage of all these counter blasts and be aggressive, maybe I'll tone it down, save the counter blast for defensiveness, and then push again next turn. So 
the turns can basically be kind of like a decision of your opponent going, okay, do I want to take this damage? Do I want to block this? If I block this, he's just going to keep on swinging at me. Do I hope for a trigger? And it's like things like that that are going to go into play. So I do feel like the Gurgit deck takes like some more like, I want to say scenario-based battle phase timing, whereas the Spectral Duke deck is just like, you throw on your board, the battle phase is the same, however it goes. So, um, But I would say they're both pretty much the same in terms of competitivity. Um, I just like Gurgit. <laughs> um, but yeah, you guys will see or probably will have seen already the Gurgit versus Spectral Duke decks. You kind of get an idea there how the decks perform against each other. So there's that as well. Um, yeah, it's been fun. Standard's been okay. Not as fun as G, personal opinion. I liked Triple Drive and Quadruple Drive a lot. But um, it's been moderately okay. And Premium was really cool. I like Premium a lot. And after this, we're going to just focus on D-Series in the near future. And... You know, getting life back to normal as much as we can. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the next future video. Bye.